YouTube. This is your girl Ashley from Ashley's World. How y'all doing today? So, <clears throat> as you see what it says for the video we're actually going to do today story time of my sister. And, you know, some mixture of things in between there. Uh, so, first of all, anybody out there that has ever had to go through the prob the process of you losing a sibling it it is heartful it's heartbreaking um it can be emotional a long emotional healing ride really um and i find myself on it all the time i'm more okay in discussing or talking about her now with like first four years five years even it didn't happen um, I want to basically have this video be encouraging for someone who maybe has recently lost a sibling or has lost a sibling maybe a year or two, you're still in, you're still trying to figure out what your next move is, you're still trying to figure out what your next mode is. I'm going to tell you first, as a standing point right now, it is okay. You will be okay. It will be to the point where some days are harder than others. Birthdays, holidays, the anniversary of their death in itself will be hard on you to handle. But you will get to the point where you are able to get through it. Um, okay, so story time. My sister was 17 years old when she was shot. Okay, so she used to have to, she was on a box, like, um, um, house arrest. And, I turned it down a little bit. And she, um, was to do, um, what is that? Community service to try to help to earn her way off of the, off of the box, okay? And she was doing so, she met three boys while in there. And got a relationship with him, got cool with him. Um, and they, you know, she hadn't known them long at all, but enough to befriend people. My, my sister was very friendly with people. She was very just like open to talking to people, very open to connecting with people, like me and my other sister are. We just were quiet about We're more quiet about it now, but we, we've always been like that. So my sister. Uh, she got affiliated with three boys, and they were all in, you know, the same process of getting their, uh, you know, their selves on the right track, I guess, and so to speak, I guess, in, that, in this particular program. So, she gets cool with them, exchange numbers, things of that nature. Hadn't known them, we'll say, maybe a few weeks, maybe even a month. Specific timing is still unknown. Um... The she she meets them. They one of the boys or text her uh, about you know I guess going to handle something or whatever. One of the boys actually his mom had an issue with her boyfriend and told her son about it. And I guess her son felt like he was going to uh, stand up for his mama. You know I'm a I'm a handle my business whatever whatever. Go over there with the intent to I guess handle his business. And he took the two other boys and my sister. They all went over there. And word is that they, uh, you can look him, Rudell Inglewood. Um, we actually got close with his sisters while we were all in court. But they went over and basically they went to the residence. And they were intending on going over there to shoot the guy that was causing emotional and physical harm to one of the boys mother's mother well, yeah one of the boys mother but <clears throat> when they went over there apparently they were shoot they shot the wrong guy and not apparently they did they shot the wrong guy and he ended up being in the hospital we found out about him being shot on the 15th of october my sister had never said anything 14th of october excuse me my sister had never said anything we knew nothing of it and she was always like one of those to go and leave and come back late and all this. And we never thought nothing of it. 
and supposedly she went back over there on the 15th, I guess, to go check in and see what had happened, make sure the guy was all right. And that's when she found out he was in the hospital. And she, uh, when she went over there, the boys had assumed that she went over there to go with the purpose of snitching. And versus asking her if this was the situation, they go ahead and they make a plot to basically to kill her. I do not own the rights to this music. I just want y'all to know. It's just my vibe right now. I'm just mellowing out. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, let's see. Where was I at? Oh, okay. Yeah. So she went over there to go check in or whatever. And the boys found out about it. They text my sister on Sunday, October 16th, 2011. I text her, yo, bro, where you at? Let's let's go hit this lick, you know. And she was down for it. She went to go meet up with them. Uh, and while she met up with them, they were like, it's not even a whole. <sighs> Sorry, I'm tired. We'll say. Three, somewhere between three and six feet. I don't know the exact measurements. I just know there's like, my godmama's house at the time uh, was not far, so we could actually see where they were. We did, I did, we didn't see them. I'll get to that later on. So basically, they met up with her. They walking across these abandoned old train tracks, and from what we know of, that was said in court and based off of the evidence and everything, they shot my sister seven times which was at that time considered gang style. Um, and they passed the gun around to do so. She was shot five times in the back, once in the back of the head. And then when she was down, they shot her in the stomach. Um, and then my sister, I guess in, in the process of bleeding and everything on the ground, they said that she looked like she was trying to get, like scoot somewhere, I guess. And their, and to, their thought was, is that she was trying to scoot to get to my godmama's house, which is where I was. Um, and my godmama wasn't home that day, and my mom was not home either. So, that was the idea. That's where she went. And it was like, okay, if that's the case, basically, she, it, she took 30 minutes to actually pass away. And we, me and my baby sister, uh, She's 20 now. At the time, she was getting ready to be uh, 11. And she, because she, you know, she turned 11, turned 11 in November that following year. Or that following month, rather. But we were in the house. I remember feeling so sick. I remember feeling like my head was hurting. My, my body just felt like I couldn't move. Everything just was in such a pain. I was in so much pain that I just remember laying around. My sister was laying around. Well, she was in the recliner, but she was still laying around. And it was crazy. We just couldn't do nothing. And it was it was weird because we heard the sirens come down and everything. And we, that was all we heard. We didn't hear no gunshots. We were in distance to hear it. The people that were living below my granny house and above us all both said that they heard it. Me and my sister, we didn't hear anything. And... It was like these two apartment buildings and some bushes. We, When we did get a chance to get outside, after we heard all the sirens and everything, we still hadn't heard anything. We were just like, we were watching them. You know, we saw everything from even when the coroner's unit drove down in their white van that went up into the, the bushes on the train track with this like white book bag and came back down with the body in the bag and put the body on the gurney, strapped the body up, Put the body back in the back of the vehicle and drove off. We didn't. Me and my sisters were standing outside at this time. Had no idea what was going on. My mom was walking down the street. And she was like, oh, she was like, oh, something happened. I was like, yeah. She was like, I don't want to see it. I wouldn't want to know. And the whole time I'm outside, I'm like, I'm outside watching this and seeing them do these, uh, the, tri the triangles and everything. I'm like, I'm praying for the family. I'm hoping that they find closure. I'm like, I wonder where Carrie at. See if she's seen this or see if she anywhere around. So I text, I'm texting my sister like, yo, bro, where you at? Like, what you doing? Where, where you, when you coming back? I remember texting her like, uh, 
They said some little girl got shot over here. Did you know her? At the time, everybody was saying little girl, little girl, little girl. We had even seen where they put a shoe out on a, they threw a shoe over the, off of the, onto the divider on the other side of the street or below the train track on the street. We were like, that was like Carrie shoe. We didn't think, again, didn't think nothing of it. So I'm steady texting her. This is all through Sunday. Nobody's heard from her. No thought process whatsoever. Um, I then, I'm still at my godmama's house. This is now we're going to go into Monday. Because all through Sunday wasn't nothing for us to really know and, and see or hear about. So then we get to the point where, okay, Monday comes. Monday, midday, about 10, 11-ish. And I, um, I have to be home at my godmama's house still. And there's a knock at the door. I'm like... I'm by myself, okay? I'm home by myself. I don't think nothing of I look off the balcony. I see people standing there. They don't look dangerous. So I run downstairs. I open the door. I say, can I help you? And these detectives are standing there. And I know they're detectives because they're standing there with their badges shown on their waist. One had it around his neck. And I'm like, can I help you? They're like, we're looking for Ashley Khan. I said, well, that's me, you know? And uh, they're like, um, well, we've been trying to locate you for the past 24 hours. I'm like, okay, I didn't do anything, but okay. Like, your instant thought is just to say, I didn't do anything. Like, that was immediately the first thing that I said. And they were like, um, well, um, are, are you missing anybody right now? I'm like, not really missing. She just kind of take off when she feel like it. Was she mad at me or my mama? Like, my sister, and they're like, well, can you describe her for us? And I'm like, okay, brown skin, a little bit darker than me. Um, her hair about right here, she's braided. Or she was wearing braids. Skinny. Big lips. You know, she's 17. She just doing what a typical teenager does. And they're like, well, did you see everything yesterday? And I'm like, I didn't see everything. I know of what y'all were over there doing, but that's about it. Like, I didn't, I don't know nothing else. I didn't see anybody. I didn't hear anything. I saw y'all when y'all were looking around there, and I saw the corners drive off, but that was about it. And they were like, um, well, we're sorry to have to tell you this. We've been looking everywhere for you because that was your sister. I'm like, excuse me? And it's like when they said it, everything around me went black. Like, I remember, I didn't have my phone in my hand or nothing. I went to the door. I didn't have my phone in my hand or nothing. And I'm just like, wait, what? And like, like I said, everything around me just went black. Like, I couldn't see or think or nothing. Everything just shattered in one spot. And I'm like, I remember telling them, can you hold on a second? And I run, I'm running upstairs, back up, back up the stairs. I managed to get one shoe on, and I'm all the while texting on my phone. All caps is about to come out. Mama, where you at? Get here now. Before I could hit hit the sin on my cell phone, I heard what could be only described as a mother's cry, a mother's scream. And I've never heard my mama scream like that before. Not even when she had my sisters, she didn't scream like that. So this scream came and I instantly, I felt it. It's like everything knew, I knew in my heart it was her. I knew in my mind it was her. It was like instinct. I'm like, damn, they got to her before I did. And I get, I'm running down a step. This time I'm back down, skipping steps. Boom, boom. Just, I'm practically diving down these steps. Maybe it's about 10 steps. I'm just, I'm just going, just getting that one shoe on, one shoe off. Then drop the phone on the couch and everything. I'm down there. I run down there and I see my mom in the grass and she's just rocking back and forth, just holding her chest. My baby, my baby, no, my baby, no. And I'm, all I can remember is, Literally sliding on my knees in the grass, holding my mama's head like, Mama, I'm sorry. I know I was home yesterday. I know. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. And she, I know she wasn't mad at me or nothing. It's just, in that moment, she just was not hearing anything. It's just, at this moment, she just knew her baby was gone. No questions asked. Just gone. And... She got the wanting to know how and the why and all that and who. And we get to this process of the, the, the detectives are telling us, well, yeah, she, you know, that was, she, it was her yesterday. 
Oh, they were trying to reach us fast 24 hours. They said, well, we knew how to reach her because of her cell phone. And at the time, I had a track phone. So the track phone um, is what is how they located me based off the GPS for it. And it was just, it was just crazy. It was really crazy. We couldn't do nothing. Like, we couldn't even have her. She died on the 16th. We didn't get to bury her till. I think it was the 28th, 29th, because she was evidence. She had to go through the process of being evidence. So she had her autopsy, her regular autopsy, and then they did the thing where they wanted to check her for anything additional since she was part of evidence. And then one of the boys was considered at large at the time, and they knew he still had a weapon, so they didn't want us to have a funeral, and he popped up on us, and it'd be another reason for another funeral. So... It just and got in, it was just crazy and then it was annoying because ch the news trucks kept coming. We couldn't even like we were leaving the house to just go to the store, and it, they would just be there, you know, just trying to ask questions and things of like that. And like we didn't even a whole a day or two into this. The only thing I can think at this time was I'm like, I need to get to my baby sister. I need to get to my baby sister. And at the time, I called my guy brother to come and get me. I told him what was going on. He came over, you know, comforting me. We were, I was crying to him. I'm like, I got to tell Desi. I don't know how I'm going to tell her, but I got to tell her. My mom was no good at this time. No good, which is understandable. My guy mama had got home at that time, so I knew she was all right. She could sit with her and tell I can go get Desi. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go get her. I went and got her from school. Everybody at her school, when they saw me walking in, they just were holding, hugging me and crying and everything. And I'm like, I just need to get her. I need, I need to lay eyes on her. I need to get her. So, um, like I said, at the time, my sister was, she was 10. And she had, uh, she was like, looking at me. She didn't exactly know nothing was wrong yet. But you can kind of tell she, because she was just eyeballing me. Like, she... She's not used to me coming to pick her up from school. That's to say that. Not picking her up early. So, stop. Crazy dog. Um, so, we, uh, my guy brother, I'm like, okay, I need to get her at least something. I can, I can get her easier into it this way. And I knew that McDonald's was around the corner. So, I'm like, okay, let's go to McDonald's. So, we go to McDonald's and we're sitting there. And I am barely just reacting. And so she's sitting in front of me, and she's like, what's wrong? I'm like, nothing. And she's like, I'm like, I have something to tell you. And she's like, okay. She's like, well, did Carrie ever come back? And I I just, I remember holding my head down. I'm like, <sighs> I told her, I'm like, she, she's not coming back, baby. She's, she's not coming back. And she's like, well, where'd she go? Is she in 2020 again? My sister was often in 2020 because either her mom would fall out or she would do something that she knew my mama didn't agree with so she did go to 2020 so i can understand why she instantly would think this though but that wasn't the case i wanted it to be but it wasn't so she um she's like did she go to 2020 again i'm like no baby she's not she's not a 2020 and she's like well where is she i'm like she's gone baby she's gone and she's like, where did you, where'd she go? I'm like, you remember when we were outside yesterday? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, that was her yesterday. That's what the detectives told me today, this morning, is that that was her. And she was like, she couldn't even finish her food anymore. And at the time, she used to love McDonald's, but she couldn't even finish hers anymore. She put her head down. She started crying. I went to hug her. And she was just ready to go at that time. She was like, I want to go see mama. So we went on ahead and threw the food away. We didn't even bother to eat it. And I had my god brother take us back to the house. My mama just held Desi and she just cried. They was just crying. We were all just really just crying. And it was like something in me just kicked into a higher gear of knowing that all right, my mom and my baby sister both need me to now be strong for real. At least right now. I need to make sure that they're straight. I need to make sure that they're okay. And I didn't know what that looked like. I just knew that I was the oldest. I just knew that I had a, a task to complete. And that task was 
I need to make sure my sister is good. And it was crazy because like a month or two before this even happened, me and her had this conversation where, oh, if you go before me, here's what I want, da 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 And she said the same thing. And everything that she said she wanted, I tried my best to do. From wearing the blue to the blue casket to making sure that everybody was just okay. And and her being her, when she, if you met her, you loved her. You know what I mean? Like she, she gave you shit, but she loved everybody. She clowned with you. You know what I mean? And it was Muslims that were there that were just representing her to the fullest. Churches, organizations she was part of. She had a, it was a seat standing room only type of service for real. You would have never thought that this 17-year-old girl touched so many people, doing so much. She loved basketball. She played drums in church. She danced in church. So it, it was amazing to see that she, in 17 years of life, touched so many people. It was inspiring and emotional at the same time. And it was like for a brief day, everybody was a family. They didn't know us. We didn't know them. They knew my sister, though. And for that day, we were all a family. For that day, we all shared the same exact emotion, the same exact hurt that this person that touched our life in one way or another was taken. And, I mean, that's really all you can take from it is, is that it was definitely hard. It was definitely a task. But, like I said, my mindset was just making sure that my mom and my baby sister were okay. And I didn't allow myself to grieve a lot. I, yes, cried, of course, and I cried the day of her funeral and the entire process, and I still cry to this day on certain days that remind me of her. But I'm not like I used to be with the whole crying thing. You know, I mean, I feel like I'm stronger in it now. I feel like her passing made me stronger in ways that I never thought possible. I feel like that it gave me a better understanding of it's not about... It's not about how long you're here. It's about who you touch while you're here. And if you can make an impact on so many people in such a short amount of time, then you have done your purpose. You have set your goal, even if it's unknowingly a goal for you to set. You know, and for her to be 17, and when I say standing room only in this big church, yeah, I mean, that's when you know you've made some type of impact somewhere, whether it was playing basketball drums clowning getting in trouble whatever the case may be you know you've made a difference you know you've made an impact and that's what that day inspired me to do that often you know and I've, I've i've struggled with certain areas where i didn't know what i wanted to do who i wanted to be who i was coming into being you know i was in my early 20s losing my baby sister and then figuring out how to bury her at the same time someone that i considered like a child for me, I've, I've always said, it was always a joke to me. My mama, like, she had my sisters for me, which was which was true. If you've seen a lot of our pictures, if I were to show a lot of her pictures, I'll say that. Then you'll see, oh, yeah, you had them often. Yeah, I did. They were my heart. They still are. My baby sister, yes, she's 21 now, but I will have heaven, hell, and high water for her, and she knows it. I love her with a passion, and I, I feel like I helped to raise them and mold them into who they are, and they... They respect me as such. And that's what has always been important to me. And I know that my sister's passing is still affecting my baby sister. Because she was so young when that uh, when that occurred. But she's grown a lot too in the process. And I know I have. I've, I've definitely grown a lot. I mean, that was 10 years ago. And no, it doesn't get easier. I'm going to tell you that if you lose a sibling, well, you lose anybody. But if you lose a sibling... Especially that way. It doesn't necessarily get easier, but you it gets to the point where you can handle. And I know that part is coming now that we've lost our mom. But it's a when when you're in that moment right then and there, you don't see it that way. You don't feel it to be that way. You just know and hope that it'll get to that point. And then that's and, and people are always gonna be okay and this and the other. Yeah, and it will. It's just at that moment right then, that's not what you wanna hear. Don't tell me what I wanna hear. Don't tell me what you think I should hear, rather. Because that's not what I want to hear. So, I mean, everybody grieves differently. We just have to expect it, respect it, and accept it. Um, 
So yeah, that's that's really the end of my story time for today, at least for that particular story. My sister left this world, she left a legacy. In all of her 17 years, she did what she set out to do. Be herself, be in, and be genuine. And that was enough to inspire me to do the same. Hopefully, this video can kind of help you in a way of, if you have lost a sibling, know that it will be okay. Know that there will be days where it's going to it's gonna feel hard and it's gonna feel unbearable. And there will be days where you're gonna feel like I don't wanna try no more. But you can't have that mindset. You can't think that way. You can't it, it you're not doing them any justice if you do that. You giving up, what was their life for? Especially if you're someone they were close to, right? So that's the end of this video. I hope that you like, share, subscribe, and definitely hit that notification bell so that you know exactly when I post another video. I'm trying to be more active for y'all. I'm trying to give you what you want, get you more content. So definitely, definitely, definitely continue to hang with me and continue to pray for me. I will pray for you. I love y'all. Peace.